is cap. Option two is silk. Three, you f Hello, welcome back to another theory of winning time. What happens to Norm Nixon after leaving the Lakers? Delve into the intriguing journey of Norm Nixon after his departure from the Lakers. In this captivating video, we unravel the lesser known story of what transpired in the life of this basketball legend after his time with the team. From career moves to personal endeavors, find out how Norm Nixon navigated life's court beyond the Lakers jersey. If you're curious about the fate of this iconic player, hit that play button and satisfy your curiosity now. Nixon was transferred to the Clippers in 1983 after West treated the former great Laker in a nearly abusive manner. Nixon played in almost every game in his first two seasons with his new team and developed into one of the Clippers' most valuable scorers, averaging about 17 points per game. Prior to being hampered by injuries for practically the remainder of his NBA career, Nixon was even chosen an all-star in the NBA in 1984-85. In 1989, Nixon played his final NBA game for the Clippers. Byron Scott, who essentially replaced Nixon on the Lakers, went on to win NBA championships with the team in 1985, 1987, and 1988, solidifying his place in Lakers history. In season two of winning time, the conflict between Nixon and West is likely to resurface at some point. The trade talks between Norm Nixon and David Thompson in winning time were inspired by actual discussions between Lakers assistant coach Pat Riley and general manager Jerry West. Due to Paul Westhead, the head coach, vetoing the deal and claiming authority over the team's coaching philosophy, the trade talks never even reached a starting point for an actual negotiation with Thompson's side. Before injuries ended his career, Nixon played for the Los Angeles Clippers after leaving the Los Angeles Lakers. There, he established himself as one of the team's top scorers and even made the NBA All-Star squad. Norm Nixon, a great point guard, was the subject of some behind-the-scenes trade negotiations in HBO's Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. In the first two episodes of Winning Time Season 2, the 1980-81 Los Angeles Lakers are shown as having a split locker room and front office after winning the NBA title the season before. The Nixon-Thompson trade talks portrayed in Winning Time Season 2, Episode 2, were based on actual considerations by Lakers assistant coach Pat Riley and general manager Jerry West. When Magic Johnson returned from the knee injury that kept him out for 45 games in the middle of the 1980-81 NBA season, West assumed head coach Paul Westhead would be enthusiastic about the idea of trading for Nixon. The Nixon-Thompson trade negotiations ultimately failed to even get off the ground with Thompson's then-team, the Denver Nuggets, and this proved not to be the case. Why the Lakers killed winning times Norm Nixon and David Thompson trade in real life Actual NBA rumors that were circulating around the Showtime Lakers in 1981 served as inspiration for the Nixon-Thompson trade. In winning time, Paul West had initially opposed the trade because he was worried about his team, which had been showing symptoms of growing discord, getting another big-headed hotshot talent like Magic Johnson. West had grudgingly agreed to the move, but after realizing he was losing control of the squad, he publicly opposed it. This gave Westhead the opportunity to assert himself and seek the right to continue leading the Lakers using his unique half-court offensive approach. The controversy surrounding Thompson behind the scenes was probably more responsible for the bungled Nixon-Thompson agreement than it was for the Lakers. Before suffering a serious knee injury that forced him to miss 36 games of the 1980 NBA season the year the Lakers unexpectedly won the NBA championship as seen in season one of winning time. Thompson was one of the game's most powerful offensive players of the late 1970s. During his 1980 injury, Thompson's personal substance misuse problems got out of control and significantly affected his game. It's possible that the Lakers heard about it and made the decision to keep Nixon as their greatest possession. Jerry West's plan to trade away Norm Nixon finally happens before the NBA's 1983-84 season. Before the 1983-84 NBA season, Nixon was eventually sent from the Lakers to the Los Angeles Clippers. Under West's direction, Nixon and teammate Eddie Jordan were traded for Byron Scott and Swen Nader, which ultimately proved to be a very unpopular decision among Lakers supporters. By the end of the 1982 season, Nixon had contributed to the Lakers winning their second NBA championship in as many years, making him an enduring figure on the team. Even during the 1982 NBA Finals, Nixon led the Lakers in scoring, giving the impression that he would play for them until the conclusion of his career. Thank you for watching.